That represents Osiris, Orpheus, uh, Dionysus, Bacchus. That represents all of these gods that have been killed and they're buried right now in a pit and they're awaiting resurrection. So let's go back to this image of the Statue of Liberty holding the keystone in her hand. And I want you to notice the date on here. The date is July 4th, 1776. If we were to break this down, 741776. We add these numbers together, we end up with the number 32. So I want you to get this imagery here because this number 32 is related to the Sephiroth or the Tree of Life in the Kabbalah. We have 10 circles. They represent the 10 kings of Daniel chapter 2, Revelation chapter uh, 13, the 10 horns of the beast. These 10 divine kings that Manly Hall calls them. And we have 22 paths. That represents the 22 Hebrew letters. But really what it represents is the 22 amino acids that are formed in the genetic code of mankind. So we have the numbers 22 and 10 added together. And here in Daniel chapter 7 verse 24, the Bible says, And the ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them. So these ten kings are the ten toes in Nebuchadnezzar's vision in Daniel chapter 2. And they're part of iron and part of clay, and they are mingled together. And Daniel said, They, this king, kingdom, these ten gods shall mingle themselves with the seed or with the DNA of men. So when we look at this image of the Sephiroth, that's what we have. We have the, the, the fourth kingdom of Daniel mingled with the 22 amino acids of man's DNA that makes mankind a god. That's what the number 32 means, but we're not done. When we look at Daniel chapter 7 again, the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. So we have, we have, we have ten kings, but we have one that rises up out of them. So here we have uh, the 32 of the ten kings plus mankind together, and that brings up one who's rising up out of them. That gives us 32. Let me show you the imagery again of this tablet. We have the encoded number 32, but we also have the keystone itself. I want to show you this in the scriptures. This is characterized by ben Hadad, the king of Syria, who gathered all of his hosts together, and there were 30 and 2 kings with him. That makes 33. This is why you see the number 33 emblazoned across the symbolism of Freemasonry. This is why, this is why the serpent must rise up the 33 bones of the spinal column to bring mankind to illumination and to make him a god. I also want you to notice the way in which she is holding this tablet. She is holding it by her side as if it were a child. You see these images all throughout Catholicism. Remember the solar crown, the god Osiris, the sun god? Here's the goddess holding her newborn baby, the sun rays emblazoned over both of their heads. Everybody says, this is the Virgin Mary and Jesus. No, it's not. This same imagery goes all the way back to ancient Babylon. You have the woman holding the child at her breast. So the symbolism that we see so far is she's holding the torch of illumination. She's about to bring illumination to mankind. And she is holding the keystone as if she were holding her newborn child. She is making an offering to the world of her child, the beast, the Antichrist. Now, let's get an aerial view of the Statue of Liberty. I want you to notice she stands upon a pedestal, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are 10 smaller points and one big one. We saw that verse a while ago in Daniel chapter 7. And the 10 horns out of this kingdom are 10 kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. So this imagery of the number 11 points to the 10 kings 
But the notable horn that Daniel referred to, or another king shall arise in their midst. And so this number 11 references the beast of the last days. Remember, we started out earlier in Revelation chapter 9, and I'm going to show you this. I'm going to read this to you, Revelation chapter 9, verses 7. Here we have a description of the armies of locusts that come up out of the bottomless pit and the king that follows with them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women. Notice the, the androgynous here. They are like men and women together. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had the breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, that iron kingdom. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. That's what that hand represents. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Now I'm going to break this down for you, and I'm going to show you what the symbolism behind this number 11 really represents. Here's the description now broken down of these locust devils. Number one, they had the shapes of the locust. Number two, and on their heads were like crown of gold. Three, their faces were the faces of men. Four, they had the hair of women. Five, their teeth was like the teeth of lions. Six, they had breastplates. Seven, the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots. Eight, they had tails like an scorpions. Nine, there were stings in their tails. Ten, their power was to hurt men five months. And number 11, they had a king over them. His number is the number 11. Think of 9-11. Thinking, think of the Statue of Liberty weeping over the broken columns. That's what that imagery was all about, September 11, 2001. This is why we see her standing upon that pedestal of 11 points, or like 11 stars. But we also get this imagery. She is Notice that she is on top of this 11-pointed pedestal. We have this imagery found in Revelation chapter 17 verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. Just like we see in the images of the goddess riding the beast. Remember Europa? She's always seen sitting upon a beast. This is the image of Mystery Babylon the Great and the beast that is going to take over and rule and reign over planet Earth. Now, I'm going to get to the picture that was sent to me by one of our watchers. And you who sent this in, I appreciate it because you spawned this video. And I want to encourage all of our watchers, watch what's going on. Send it to me. We'll see if we can't make sense out of it. And sound the alarm to the world that we're going into the last days. They noticed that, they, number one, they counted the 11 points, but they noticed the shapes of this, that the, the lines went in and out. You see the points here. Notice the red dots and the blue dots. They noted that there on the outside perimeter, there was exactly 23 of these points. So then, therefore, on the inside of this perimeter, there was 23 of these points as well. 23 and 23. That's, that's 46. That just happens to be the exact number of chromosomes where our DNA is stored. Remember the symbol that we saw earlier of Jacob and Boaz, the, the two pillars? They're mentioned in the scripture as being 23 cubits tall apiece. This number 46 has everything to do with what the temple of Freemasonry is all about. It's about the human body. If we were to go back into the Old Testament, we see the wilderness tabernacle. It has 20 boards down one side, 20 boards down the other, and it has six boards across the back of it. Literally, the tabernacle, the temple, the two pillars in front of Solomon's temple, the temple that Jesus was in, they remarked to him that it took 40 and 6 years to build that particular temple. In the 46th book of the Bible, which is 1 Corinthians, it says repeatedly in there that our bodies are the temple of God. In the Masonic House of the Lodge Temple in Washington, D.C., 
It has a Greek temple on the bottom and a step pyramid on the top. There are 33 pillars around this Greek temple and 13 steps at the top. That represents the 33 degrees of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, the 13 degrees of the York Rite of Freemasonry added together, fused together, heaven and earth coming together. You have exactly the number 46. Do you know how old JFK was? When he was shot and killed, when he received a deadly wound in his head, that's Revelation chapter 13. He was exactly 46 years old. I'm going to show you something here in a little bit about the motorcade route that John F. Kennedy traveled. You're going to, you're going to need to see this. Um, in my research on the Statue of Liberty, so we saw the 46 points around the Statue of Liberty. My research in the Statue of Liberty, I was looking at the height. Remember Manley Hall said, he said, you know, in the measurements of these colossal images, they hid the arcane of the mysteries, the secret teachings. They hid that there in the measurements. And I was looking at the measurements of the Statue of Liberty in feet and inches, and I'm going, I don't understand the symbolism of that. It doesn't make sense. Then I found out, you remember, the French built this thing. I found out that at the time the French built this, that they weren't using feet and inches. They had already converted over to the metric system. So the exact measurement of the Statue of Liberty is 46 meters. She represents the temple, the new temple of man, the transformed temple of man. And remember at the beginning of this, I told you that inside of the Statue of Liberty, 46 meters tall, inside the Statue of Liberty, there was a secret message. Let me, let me show you the secret message that's on the inside of the Statue of Liberty. Those who want to go and visit the Statue of Liberty, and they want to, and I want you to get this imagery here. here here's this picture of people that have reached the, the crown, the pineal gland, the illumination, the seven rays. They have reached the illumination. How did they get there? Did they go up an elevator? No, they did exactly what this beast in Kundalini must do. They go up a spiral staircase that is the exact model of your DNA. They go up this spiral staircase to reach this illumination that all of mankind is looking for, that when they abandon the Bible, then here is Mystery Babylon the Great with the torch of Lucifer that is ready and willing to give mankind her form of illumination, only it's not illumination. It's outer darkness. Because her steps, the book of Proverbs says, leads to hell. Her way is the way of death. That's where she's leading. But here we have the spiral staircase that represents the secret doctrine inside of her that it's about the transformation of mankind's DNA. Now, remember I mentioned something about JFK and I mentioned about his motorcade route. I, I've been studying this for a while and I'm slowly but surely piecing it together. We know that on November the 22nd, 1122, that makes a 33, by the way, 46-year-old President Kennedy stepped off an airplane at Love Field. He was headed to just off Highway 77, we've talked about that before, to the trademark building where he was going to have a, a luncheon and, and give a speech there. Now, you look at this map here, from Love Field to the trademark, uh, would have been a very, very simple route. It would have been, they could have had found a straight path down there. But that's not the path that they took.